Let, let's talk a little bit about Will Eisner's Ebony character. You put <laughs> you put him into uh, five. There was five. You said there were five categories of black representation in films. You apply that to comics as well. Mm-hmm. Ebony represents one of these these five categories that you had laid out in your book. Sure. Uh, there is there is also a 1973 conversation with Ebony uh, White by Will Eisner that you applauded in in your book as well. That that you you applauded it. What's your take on the Ebony character? The movement that some of the younger people are saying that we should get his name removed off of the Comic Industry Awards. That uh, you know wh- what wh- first what what's your take on Ebony? What was your impression of his 1973 conversation? Tell us about that. I tell you what, I will, I'll start off with my conversation with Will Eisner. Mm-hmm. Um, I got, I don't know how I got lucky enough to do this, but one uh, San Diego con and he was always swamped. And so I decided I'll come back later. And I came back and like, literally there was no, it had to be lunchtime. Nobody was around his booth. So I said, Mr. Eisner, I'm a big fan of your work. And I talked to him about, I said, what do you think about how people felt about Ebony? And he kind of kind of paused for a second, because it's obviously the first time he's been asked. And he said, well, it depends on when you ask me. He said, sometimes people have said that it was a great idea to be, in, be inclusive. And other people said, how dare you have such a despicable image of us? And he said he got awards from NAACP at one point, And he said, at another point, you know, they completely condemned him. And... He had, now it's interesting to me, he also had a black police officer um, who was in the, in more than one strip, in more than one comic, um, and they have one where Ebony, because a black girl turns him down, decides he's going to go back to school to get rid of his southern accent. He said he doesn't want to be recognized as a minstrel. Mm-hmm. Um, you have black soldiers. So, it's, you know, if I was doing characters, I would be real careful about who I painted. But at the same token, um, I don't know if you guys remember the creator of um, Dennis the Menace. Mm-hmm. Hank Ketchum. Hank Ketchum, yeah. Yep. Hank Ketchum came out with a black character about a year, maybe two, after Charles Schultz introduced Franklin, the black character. Uh, Franklin. And he did not get the same reaction as Charles Schultz got. People came after him with almost guns and knives. He was in Europe at the time, and he got a a wire saying, get back over here. They're they're crashing into offices. You know, they're destroying property. And his goal, he said, his response was this. He said, wait a minute. Every cartoon character is a caricature of somebody. Find somebody who looks like Mr. Wilson with his big ass. You know, (laughs) and has a... or Dennis's father, who has a nose like a nose cone, okay? Or Dennis himself, who looks like a, a tramp with a load in his pants, you know? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. You, you know, you're creating something, but the idea is that people were, as we said, I can't make anybody un- less sensitive than they are when they see an ex- uh, in- image of the thing is really negative. So, Ebony, I, I didn't feel insulted because on top of everything else, now, I got a question for you guys. I, I used to do it for my students. You remember the old TV show, I Spy? Yeah. Yeah. Robert Cole, Bill Cosby. Okay, here we go. I want you to think about a, a typical episode. They're getting into a car. Who's driving? Is it Cosby or is it Cole? If it's Cosby, is he the servant? If it's Cole, it's because he's the master. <laughs> or does it not make a difference? Right. Yeah. Sometimes people will get their own impression of something. And so I think that's the same thing. We, and we're going to see it. We're going to see it continuously until somebody comes out with a character that's just so stereotypical that they're just going to, and it'll be done for that point. Okay. Because there's got to be artistic freedom on one side and you got to be telling a story on the other side. And mm-hmm. it's, and we all think that every point has to be, you know, you have to hit these numbers on every story you do. When has that ever been true? Because that's been changing dr- dramatically. Um, um, think about a character like Spawn, who was a black guy when he was alive. But now the skin's burned off. But people still think of him as a black superhero. I have right. a friend who says, no, I don't want no dead guy as a superhero. Yeah. You know? So it's and it's such a yin and yang. But for me, uh, unless I... When was the last time I was offended by a character? Oh, okay. Um, I collect all kinds of comic books. So I collected one that was put out by the American Nazi Party. And so you can have an appreciation what kind of characters they showed on. Yeah. Uh, that just, I just screamed 
you know, you weren't trying to be nice to nobody. You were trying to make a real important statement about what you think about other races and other religions, okay? And the, the more cool and violent you were to those members of those races or those religions, the more you thought you were making your point. Got you. Not lost at all. But you don't really have to go all the way back to the Nazis to be offended oh, no. by. I mean, like, there's American comics that I'm sure. I, oh God, yeah. You know, I. But they I, never had a. They never had an important role. They were only shown for service, um, you know, protection, like on the cover. Never seen inside the book. There weren't any black superheroes. There were no black superheroines. And yeah, so the absence, and then the people who did appear were were they something to be admired? Nope. Not for the longest time. Yeah. I right. noticed you have um, kind of two perspectives kind of happening at the same time. Sure. And they're valid and they're both true is there's that one aspect of we, we should be represented better. But then sure. there's another aspect of, and you said this in your book, that it's better than nothing. And that I, I, I love the comics for its form and I love the history of it and that you appreciate it for where it was. Um, it's kind of interesting that you have both of those happening at the same time. Well, the big place got it. And what's, this, what's one of the biggest problems we have right this minute, this time in history, is that if you don't think the exact same way I do, not only must you be punished, but you must be punished severely. Yeah. I think that's horrible. But here's the thing. I've seen enough. Um, I've seen enough of people of color creating their own comic books. And that's the excitement for me. And it never ends. And then I've seen them move into mainstream comics and do their own books. So with the point where you had nothing on the screen to the point now you have an, any number of points of view, and that's the only way it can be. No one black person can represent the entire race. No one woman can represent the entire gender. And yet somebody will always say, well, we got one. No, that's called tokenism. And that's not a good idea. 